So here we've got Matt again, and we've got the reverse photo side of him. You don't see this angle very often with hitters, so actually we can see the C that he's creating there, right? We call it reverse because we're always looking at the other side of the hitter. Um, what strikes me here is how rotated his shoulders are, and I think sometimes people look at this and they say, well, he's arching his back. Right. But that's not accurate, is it? Yeah, no, what you're seeing is you're seeing the spine actually turning, and because you're seeing the shape of the side of the lap muscles and the side of the back, just kind of the V-shape, it looks like he's really arching. In the ideal world, right now, if you look at his pelvis, his pelvis isn't tilted forward, his lumbar spine might be somewhat extended or arched, but right now it's pretty much in neutral position, but the spine has actually rotated around itself, around this axis that way. So we've wound up, he's ready to go. And in this photo, he's actually started to kick his leg down um, because we can, see, we can see that there's a little bit of extension happening here, which has started to fire the hips. And, but we still see his shoulders like really uh, opened back, even though his hips have started to rotate forward. So um, you've talked to me about that being hip and shoulder separation. Can you talk about that? Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> to start with what you're seeing here is a lot of athletes, rotational athletes, a volleyball player, a hitter, who are trying to get to rotate, they're a rotational athlete. But so many of them are locked down in their thoracic spine or their T-spine, which goes from the bottom of their rib cage up to the top of the, of the, right below the neck. And basically he has the mobility, the ability to turn his shoulders over there, right? And open that up. Or the other way of looking at it is he has the mobility through his thoracic spine for his hips to start to turn through. Either way, it creates what we call hip and shoulder separation. And there's some noted authorities that talk about that 80% of the power for hitting or throwing comes from hip and shoulder separation, right? So. All this connective tissue is important. Maybe the most important piece is to create arm speed. It comes from the ability to turn your shoulders, have the mobility to keep your shoulders turned to the sideline while your hips turn through because it creates this big stretch through the muscles, through the fascia there. And once again, 80% of the power for his arm swing coming through is gonna come from his core doing that. So it's really important that he has the mobility. And the first point I was trying to make was a lot of rotational athletes don't actually have that mobility, right? So they're, all, they're almost forced into this flexion, extension pattern with the shoulder, arch, extension, flexion with the spine. They're almost forced into that because their body won't rotate, because nobody's showing them it needs to rotate. They're not working on rotational mobility in their hips and in the thoracic spine. Um, I was looking at a book called Anatomy Trains because as you met the, mentioned these fascial lines, I was stunned to see how thick and fibrous they are as they kind of like, they crisscross the body through the right. chest and torso, don't they? And, yep. and then go through the hips. Right. Can you just talk a little bit more about that relationship again? Well, first and foremost, probably give Thomas Myers credit that wrote that book, Anatomy Trains. If you haven't read it, you should. If you're coaching and you're coaching rotational athletes and you're, and you're understanding what we're saying, it's a great book to give you a foundation and it's based on the anatomy. So if you're a coach, in my opinion, you need to learn the anatomy before you go out and try to teach mechanics, right? Um, so it's a good book. It talks about all kinds of lines on the back side of the body, front side of the body from lines that go straight up and down, superficial more out to the outer part of the body, deeper lines that are in closer to your spine in, inside the body, and then spiral lines, once again, that go from, if I turn you to the camera, they go from up here and they spiral, rotate across the body, right? And that's really more, of it's those spiral lines that we're really trying to take advantage of versus this just, you know, extension, flexion pattern with the back, flexion, extension pattern with the shoulder. We're trying to get out of that because the athletes don't tolerate it on their shoulder. They don't tolerate it on their back very well. They tolerate the, rotor, the rotational movements better. And so it's those spiral lines we're trying to load and stretch and take advantage of them. Um, here we've got a top shot of Matt, and I think um, we can see what you're talking about with the separation of the plane of his shoulders with the plane of his hips. So just tell us what you're seeing here. Well, that is, from the top view looking down, it's, one, it's a cool picture by itself, but it really shows hip and shoulder separation. If we drew a line through his shoulder from right shoulder to the left, and when we drew, you know, we put a stick or a plank or something there, you can see that his shoulders are turned there, his hips are turned there, so that's hip and shoulder separation. That happens by thoracic spine 
being mobile enough to turn around and have my hips going one way and my shoulders going the other. Um, once again, 80% of the power for his arm swing is gonna come from that hip and shoulder separation, assuming he can turn. You know from one of your players we had earlier this year we shot the video of, when I watched her hit that one day, her body rotated, but there was no hip and shoulder separation. The hip and the shoulder all came through together. That's when I took her in the weight room and did the T-spine turn test, and yeah, she's locked down. And as soon as we started to open her up, her swing changed in the air really without having to cue her. So the mobility through the shoulders, the T-spine here, not the shoulders, but the thoracic spine is really critical. And once again, the majority of athletes I work with, whether they're baseball, hockey, volleyball, a lot of them are locked down. And uh, to me, it's a function of, you haven't asked a question, but I'm gonna give you my bias, it's a function of how we train. Um, you know, I, I think there is another thing that's maybe misunderstood, because I do hear coaches sometimes who teach the low elbow, uh, they talk to players about get your elbow back. And really, yeah. it's not the fact that his elbow's back. Yeah. Right? What's happened? Yeah. Well, and that, that's huge. And you, you go into the baseball, the pitching world, right? And there's a lot of injuries that have happened. And actually, those have been cleaning up in baseball. There used to be a lot of shoulder injuries, right? And it was because if you look right here, once again, if you go from the line from his right shoulder to his left, you'll see that his upper arm, both upper arms, are in line with that. That's good. His T-spine's turning around. He's loading into his core. He's getting that fascial stretch, the muscle stretch there but the, the health of his right shoulder, his hitting shoulder in this case, is better because that arm stays in line with the shoulders. When this elbow gets behind that line, that'll create havoc on the shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm telling the athletes or telling the coaches is, if, if I'm trying to get the athlete to turn around and get the arm back, and the T-spine's locked up, I don't want this arm going back behind the shoulder line. That's gonna create problems on the shoulder. If they can't get it back there, you have to look at their T-spine and make sure the T-spine can turn because this ought to actually move back and stay in line with this line overhead, if that makes sense. Exactly, and that's what I wanted you, that's what I wanted you to differentiate, right? When, when we're getting athletes to load, we aren't trying to get their elbow back independently, we're actually trying to rotate them back into this position so that this relationship from the hitting elbow through the hitting shoulder, through the not hitting shoulder, that, that, retain, that remains pretty much a straight line by the rotation of the shoulder, Correct. not by the elbow going back. Correct. Just from the coaching standpoint, I see what you're talking about. I see like this tilt of the shoulders here and his elbow kind of in line with that tilt. His elbow and hand are below his head, um, below his chin. He's open and rotated with his shoulders. His hips at this point are facing the net and he's got his legs kind of up in this position. Can you just kind of maybe just illustrate again where those lines of fascia are that he's Sure, connecting? so this is the reverse <coughs> power C position. So if a normal C would look like that. We've reversed the C, so you see that in a lot of power athletes, right? Who can get into really good powerful positions. So his legs are tucked up behind him. You're right, he's rotated his upper torso, shoulders to the right. And so right now, from, from basically his right wrist down across the front of the arm, the chest, the shoulder, and just you can even see the creases in the shirt, that's where those lines of fascia are going to, across from the rib cage down to the opposite hip, down on the opposite side of his left leg, and actually then down to the outside of his, of his left foot, right? And so that's a really good position right now. He's had muscle force pulling into that position, it stretches those, that, that fascia, that connective tissue, and it's loading it up. And now all he basically has to do, the best hitters will kick the left leg, and it quickly then on its own, that elasticity just gets released and it shortens, and it just turns the hips through, it pulls the hip, turn of the hips, pulls through that connective tissue there to pull the rib cage, that pulls the shoulders through, and then that whips the arm through with huge force. And once again, without that much muscle effort. 